What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everyone's doing well out there today where we're talking about quarterback starts and sits here for week one, and you don't want to get overly cute in week one. You start your studs, but like in every other start-sit video, we're going to hear about all these guys playing this weekend. I got some timestamps down below. Hit the like button for some timestamps in season. Before we get into each matchup, I have to make sure I tell you about the free square play in prize picks here this week. It's Tom Brady. If Tom Brady can throw for one yard this week, which I think he could probably eclipse that number, you're going to get a free square win in prize picks. Head over to prize picks if you don't have an account already. Set up a new one with using referral code headliners. When you do so, we'll match your deposit up to 100 bucks, and we're going to be dropping prize pick plays in each one of our start sit videos so we can walk away with some extra money, hopefully here by the end of the year looking forward to doing that but now is the time we dive into each matchup we're going to kick it off with a good one on thursday night football the buffalo bills and los angeles rams and it really shouldn't be a surprise that both of these guys are starts here this week, right? It really, really shouldn't be, especially for Josh Allen. When we look at his overall numbers here, scored a 21 out of 25 possible points. In production, the guy scores fantasy points. Averaging 25 fantasy points per game over the last two years, the number one quarterback overall just last year. Buffalo, they like to throw the ball. They average about 36 pass attempts per game, and this could be a potential shootout where we see a lot of back and forth scoring. Not an easy matchup for him going up against LA, who we know they have some playmakers on that side of the defense. Just last year, this defense only allowed 16.8 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. Now, on the Buffalo Bills side of things, when it comes to injuries here, I'm only going to really talk about one on the defensive side of things, and it's the loss of Tredavious White. Could that loss in the secondary lead to more scoring on the L.A. side, which keeps Josh Allen and the Bills with their foot firmly on the pedal, trying to score more points? Love that. But the X factor here is really the rushing upside. Josh Allen averages right around seven rush attempts per game. We know he has the short game. We know he's got the deep ball, especially with Gabe Davis here this year. Loving Josh Allen. He scores 21 out of 25 and is a start. For Matthew Stafford, it's a little closer, right? Last year, he finished as quarterback five overall, 11th in points per game, though, has had two touchdowns in 13 of the 17 games he played during the regular season just last year. But he's not out there just throwing the ball a butt ton. He only had four games in 2021 in which he eclipsed 40 pass attempts in a game, averaging right around 33.9 for the year, which comes in middle of the pack 16th overall. Buffalo, the number one defense last year against those opposing quarterbacks, allowing only 12.8 fantasy points per game. But once again, no Tredavious White. The injury concerns here? We're watching the elbow issue for Matthew Stafford. Everybody and their mother is, right? He should be good to go week one. We can see by the volume numbers that he's not being overworked each and every week, and I kind of expect to see something similar. Van Jefferson, he's still recovering from an off-season surgery as well. It's the season kickoff. It's a home opener in L.A. It's primetime TV. Even though he only scored 16 out of 25 points, Matthew Stafford's still going to be a start. But now it'll take us to Sunday football, the New Orleans Saints, Atlanta Falcons. Now, we just talked about two quarterbacks we're going to start. We got two here that we're probably not, right? First one being Jameis Winston, but he's close. He's on the verge. He's definitely somebody we're going to be paying attention to. When it comes to production, Winston was actually 14th last year in fantasy points per game, averaging 17.2 points per game in 2021, but now a new head coach coming off of a torn ACL. Different pieces in this offense. What is the offense really going to look like? Because the volume really wasn't there for Jameis Winston. He was overly efficient just last year. In fact, he only averaged 28 pass attempts per game, 31st in the NFL. Four of the six starts that he had, he attempted less than 24 pass attempts. They're just not a high-volume passing offense. At least they weren't last year. How is that going to look in 2022 as far as the matchup? It's a good one. The Falcons' defense, not great. Last year allowed over 18 fantasy points per game, seventh most in the NFL. We mentioned that he's coming off of a torn ACL. How about the Michael Thomas hamstring issue? How limited is he going to be this week? The lack of offensive line depth is something else to pay attention to. The starting group, pretty solid. If anybody were to go down, got a little bit of issues there on the offensive line. So just something else to pay attention to. But the X factor, there's just too many unknowns, right? It's week one. Am I sitting here right now saying that Jameis Winston is an absolute horrible quarterback that you're never going to start? 
No, I'm not saying that. But in week one, I'm hoping you have better options till we really see what this offense looks like going forward. His opponent, Marcus Mariota. And this guy hasn't been a starter since 2018, a very low volume quarterback. Overall, this offense last year averaged 32.9 pass attempts per game. That's outside the top 15 as is, and that's with Matt Ryan, not Marcus Mariota. Now they get a matchup going up against the New Orleans Saints who allowed 17.9 fantasy points per game, middle of the pack, 16th best in the NFL, but they also added Marcus May and Tyron Matthew to the secondary. That's going to play a part in this matchup. No major injury concerns to really report, but the X factor, it's similar to New Orleans. We don't know what this offense is really going to look like week one. How are they going to integrate Cordero Patterson this year in a different type of role? How involved is Kyle Pitts? How much do we see him lining up on the outside? How many targets go the way of Drake London? Who the hell is going to be running the ball in the backfield? Will Marcus Mariota himself be scrambling still, kind of what we saw years ago? So many questions, so little answers, not worth the risk here in week one. He's going to be a sit for me as well. This will take us over to Carolina, the Cleveland Browns, Carolina Panthers. First up, Jacoby Brissett. You are not contemplating starting Jacoby Brissett in week one. Do I need to go through all these things? Okay, I will. Fine. Production. He hasn't been a full-time starter since 2019 and has never averaged over 200 passing yards per game. He's a low-volume quarterback, a dink-and-dunk guy down the field. Going up against Carolina, they allowed the fourth-fewest points to opposing quarterbacks last year at only 16.5 fantasy points per game. Not a whole lot of injuries to really worry about, but this is going to be a heavy, heavy run game in a bad matchup for quarterbacks. We're not even thinking about Jacoby Brissett. For Baker Mayfield, honestly, he was a lot closer than I thought he would be. Production-wise, new offense, more weapons, but we don't really know what the scheme is going to look like. How are they going to utilize Christian McCaffrey? Is DJ Moore really that dude that's going to get peppered with targets? Are we going to dink and dunk? Are we going to be vertical down the field with Terrace Marshall or Robbie Anderson or whoever else you want to throw out there in that offense? We just don't know for sure, but the volume is going to have to be there. Last year, Carolina threw the ball 32.7 times per game, 17th. But they had much worse quarterbacks last year. Don't forget about Sam Darnold or the busted up Cam Newton last year that just couldn't move the ball down the field. And now it's a pretty difficult matchup. Going up against his former team, Cleveland allows only 16.8 fantasy points per game, seventh best in the NFL in 2021. No major injuries right now, which is good. This is a revenge game, though. And I have a feeling that Baker Mayfield is going to go out there and throw for four touchdowns or four interceptions trying to force things to happen against his former team. A little bit too volatile, but don't be surprised, especially in two quarterback leagues, if by the time we hit week four, five, or six, Baker Mayfield may be an option as your quarterback too, just something to pay attention to here in Carolina. Now we move over to the Bears and the 49ers. First up, Trey Lance. A lot of people excited to see Trey Lance as a full-time starter. When it comes to production, what is he going to look like as a full-time starter? We've only had a very small sample size, and he still has Jimmy G looking over his shoulder at him. When it comes to volume... Not a real high passing volume offense as is with Jimmy G last year. They only threw the ball 28 times per game, 30th in the NFL. And now a matchup going up against the Chicago Bears, who are actually probably a lot better on defense in 2021 than they are in 2022. They've lost Akeem Hicks. They've lost Khalil Mack. Not a bad matchup anymore going up against the Chicago Bears. Injury concerns, Debo, not 100%. Elijah Mitchell, not 100%, but both should play, and I'm not really worried about them not being out there. The X factor, though, is the big arm and the rushing upside. Does this offense become more vertical with Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle with Trey Lance under center? I have a feeling it's going to, but we haven't seen it happen just yet. It's a great matchup. He scored 17 out of 25 points and is going to be a start for Justin Fields. I love Justin Fields. From a fan perspective, I want this guy to just go out and ball out. But I have my concerns. When it comes to production, he's never really had any chance. Very limited weapons for him to throw to each and every week he's on the field. Volume-wise, Chicago only throws the ball 31.8 times per game. That's 23rd in the NFL. Now a new head coach coming in, so maybe that can kind of increase a little bit if they open up a playbook to a Justin Fields. The matchup, not ideal. San Francisco, though, was middle of the pack against opposing quarterbacks, allowing right around 17.5 fantasy points per game. But the biggest concern here is the lack of pass-catching weapons and the ones that he 
does have kind of banged up right now. Not going to have Tajay Sharp. Byron Pringle banged up. Velas Jones is not 100% either. This kid has the juice. He has the X factor. He has the rushing upside. He's really one or two big plays away from having a solid fantasy football day for your team. It's just not something that you can really overly rely on, and you don't want to sit there crossing your fingers in week one in hopes that these one or two big plays really happen. I'm going to sit back and watch Justin Fields. He was a borderline start, scoring 14 out of 25. One more point would have thrown him into the start column, so we really need to pay attention close to one Justin Fields. Over to Cincinnati now for the Steelers and Bengals and We're looking at Mitchell Trubisky right now for the Pittsburgh Steelers. When it comes to production, this is going to be a much better situation than what he had a few years ago in Chicago, but he was never really a big touchdown, huge volume type of guy. That's just not the way that he was. His last full season as a starter, he had seven games in which he threw zero passing touchdowns. That's not what we want here in fantasy football. Now, when it comes to volume, you have to expect that they want to continue to throw the ball in Pittsburgh, right? You got Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, Chase Claypool, the Muth, Najee out of the backfield, all these guys, great pass catching weapons. You're not just going to turn around and run it all the time, but the Cincinnati defense is no pushover. They allowed just under 17 fantasy points per game just last season. It's really going to take a look here at the injuries, though, when we're looking at Deontay Johnson. Now, Deontay Johnson, obviously the quote-unquote wide receiver one here for the Pittsburgh Steelers, dealing with a shoulder injury. Is he going to be limited? Can he play? Does he play, but not the entire game? Luckily, the emergence of George Pickens isn't going to hurt the injury section here too much because Mitchie Biscuit's still going to have options to throw the ball to. As far as an X factor, listen, Mitch Trubisky is not bad. But this is going to be the first time we see a different quarterback under center leading this offense in Pittsburgh without it being Big Ben. Since 2003, in fact, it's really hard to know what it's going to look like. I can really see Mitchell Trubisky being a quote-unquote game manager, right? He goes out each and every week, 200 yards passing or so, maybe a touchdown here or there, you know, some reliance on the running game, the occasional scramble, maybe not the huge ceiling, but he's good enough to help them win ball games. But for fantasy this week, he's going to be a sit. For Joe Burrow, he is not going to be a sit. We saw him average over 20 fantasy points per game in 2021. He didn't have to force the passing game either. Cincinnati only averaged 32.7 pass attempts per game, 17th in the NFL. He was not being asked to go out there and throw 45. 50 times a game. Now, this matchup almost got a little bit easier when TJ Watt was injured the last week of the preseason, but seems like he's going to be good to go. The Pittsburgh defense allows right around 17 fantasy points per game just last year, ninth fewest in the NFL. So, an overall pretty solid squad. No injuries really here to worry about. And the X factor this is an interdivisional game, week one at home. And Joe Burrow beat Pittsburgh both times he played them last year in the regular season. So you got to come out and expect him to have that confidence and that swagger. And that's when he really plays his best. Joe Burrow, going to be a start. So now we'll go up to Detroit for the Lions and the Eagles and Jalen Hurts here up first. Of course, you're going to start Jalen Hurts for that potential upside. The production last year averaged over 21 fantasy points per game. Thank you to the rushing upside for those numbers, though, because Philadelphia did not throw the ball very much. They averaged 29 pass attempts per game. They could throw a little bit more this year, right? They've added A.J. Brown into the mix. But are we going to expect a huge monumental type jump in volume? Probably not. But this is going to be a good matchup going up against the Detroit Lions. Last year, they allowed over 18 fantasy points per game uh, to opposing quarterbacks. No major injuries to worry about, but the X factor is still going to be that rushing upside. Does he run less this year? If he does, that's greatly going to affect his overall ceiling because we're going to become so much more dependent on the passing game in which he struggled to be consistent at at times. For as of right now, though, 20 out of 25 points finds himself as a start. Jared Goff, no, we are not starting Jared Goff here in week one. Production-wise, for as much as the Lions trailed in games last year, I expected higher passing numbers from Jared Goff. But yet, still only averaged 14 fantasy points per game, threw the ball right around 35 times per matchup, which was 12 most in the NFL. But this Philadelphia defense is no pushover. Last year, they allowed right around 18 fantasy points per game against opposing quarterbacks. But I actually expect that number to be slightly improved here in Philadelphia, like what they have going on the defensive side of the football. No major injury concerns, but it's the Lions. And on paper, they have some options on offense to put up some points. But in a difficult matchup, we're not risking it with Jared Goff here in week one. 
Down to Houston for the Texans and the Colts, and Matt Ryan here up first is going to find himself in the start column in week one with a new team. Has it really been Matt Ryan that's fallen off here as of late, or was it the old Atlanta offense that really limited his overall numbers? He only averaged 13.8 fantasy points per game just last season, but I expect that to improve here in Indianapolis. Last year, the Colts threw the ball 31 times per game. That's the bottom half of the NFL. This is a great matchup, though, going up against Houston, who was one of the worst defenses last year against opposing quarterbacks, allowing over 19 fantasy points per game. However, that defense also could be slightly improved by adding Stingley here in the draft. I expect that to help the secondary here a little bit. No major injuries in Indianapolis, but this guy is going to be in a heavy run offense. The X factor can't be too high here. I kind of expect to see in this offense what we saw from Phillip Rivers just two years ago. Solid, you know, able to win ball games, but not any record-breaking type numbers that you want to throw into your lineup every single week. A solid starter, and he barely squeaks by with a 16 out of 25 points and finds himself in the start column for Davis Mills. Not this week, Davis. Now, despite seeing a lot of people last year be surprised with what they saw from Davis Mills, the guy only averaged 12 fantasy points per game, threw the ball around 32 times per game, which was 21st in the league. Kind of expected those numbers to be a little bit higher with as much as they were having to throw from being behind. Indianapolis, they allowed right around 18 fantasy points per game, but they really improved on defense this offseason, adding the likes of Stephon Gilmore, Yannick Ngakwe. So that's, they are a much more solid unit here in 22 as well. No major injuries, but the X factors are Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins enough. If people love Damian Pierce the way that they do, Damian Pierce is going to have to touch the ball 20 to 25 times. If that's the case, the ceiling won't be there for one Davis Mills. They're, they're not going to have enough scoring opportunities, I believe, to really make him fantasy viable just yet. He's still going to be a sit for me here this week. Down in Miami, we go now for the Dolphins and the Patriots. And the first guy up here, Mac Jones. Mac Jones did not play bad in 2021. He just wasn't really asked to do a whole lot. Averaged 14 fantasy points per game. But could we see that grow a little bit here in his second year in this offense? Maybe they kind of open up the playbook a little bit more for one Mac Jones. Because last year, just didn't get much of an opportunity. Like I said, 29.8 pass attempts per game. 28th in the NFL. Miami, they allowed right around 17 fantasy points per game. So not a bad matchup for Mac Jones. No major injuries to worry about right now, but I still really expect this to be a run-heavy team, really focused on Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. Once again, Mac Jones is not bad, but the ceiling just doesn't seem to be there just yet for him to be fantasy startable. 13 points out of 25, going to be a sit for one Tua Tunga Vailoa. He's going to be a start for me this week. He scored 18 out of 25 fantasy points. And it's really hard to look at the numbers from 2021 and not expect them to increase here in 2022. Tua averaged just under 15 fantasy points per game, but then they added a Tyreek Hill, a Chase Edmonds, a Cedric Wilson. They still have Jalen Waddell and Mike Gusecki. And Miami already threw the ball a lot last year. 34.9 pass attempts per game was 10th most in the NFL. Adding this new offense, this new coaching staff, these new weapons, that number could drastically increase once again here in 2022. Now, New England, they always play the Dolphins pretty tough. The Patriots were the second best team in the NFL last season against opposing quarterbacks, allowing only 13.5 fantasy points per game. But you have to think that it's going to be hard for New England to stop all of the weapons on the Miami Dolphins offense. No major injuries here, but the X factor... Tua doesn't need to be Patrick Mahomes. He really needs to find his speedsters in space and let them rack up yak yardage. Yak yardage is going to be the X factor here this week for me because a few of these short passes could go the distance, which is only going to inflate the numbers of one Tua. He's going to be a start. Now we go over to New York for the Jets and the Ravens, and I don't only like Lamar this week. I like him for the season, but he's going to get an overall 25 out of 25 points for me here this week. Last year, averaged over 21 fantasy points per game in a down year. Threw the ball over 35 times per game. The Jets allowed the third most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks just last season at 19.4 fantasy points per game. Even though I do expect that defense to be slightly improved, no major injuries here. The, really, the only one we're watching is J.K. Dobbins shouldn't overly affect Lamar Jackson with the exception of this. If J.K. doesn't play, it could lead to more rushing opportunities and Lamar taking the ball into his own hands maybe a few more times, which could lead 
to a higher X factor number this week for Lamar Jackson. That's why I got him right now as an overall 25 out of 25 smash start for Joe Flacco. Not a smash start. Now, this could be Zach Wilson at the time of this recording. We don't know for sure yet, but honestly, either way, number's not going to be overly different here in this first week. Joe Flacco hasn't been a full-time starter since 2017. Over the last three years, he started 13 games. Over that span, 15 touchdowns to 8 interceptions. There's just no ceiling there for Joe Flacco. Kind of expect them to be trailing and having to throw the ball, which does help, but the Ravens struggled against quarterbacks in 2021. A lot of that had to do with injuries to the secondary. They're back, they're healthy, and they're going to be better here this year. Like I said, we don't know for sure about Zach Wilson. This very well could be him, but I'm not overly excited about this matchup, even if it is Zach Wilson himself. There's just no ceiling this week. We need to see how this offense looks, maybe after week one, maybe in a better situation, a better matchup. Too many unknowns. I really expect them to be heavily reliant on not only Brees Hall, but Michael Carter here this week as well, limiting the ceiling as a quarterback. So Flacco or Wilson, both sits. Which will take us over to Washington for the Washington Commandos, Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence. This kid could really turn the corner here this year. He had a lot going against him just last season in his first ever NFL season. But 15 out of the 17 games he played last year, he had either zero or one passing touchdown. That's just not going to cut it here in fantasy football. Sure, the volume is going to be there because they're always going to be trailing. Last year, they averaged over 35 pass attempts per game, but we could really see that number start to come down just a little bit with some more focus on the running game in Jacksonville. This isn't an overall bad matchup. The Washington Commandos last year, one of the worst teams in the NFL against opposing quarterbacks, giving up almost 23 fantasy points per game. The injury concerns aren't really there. We're kind of waiting to see what's going on with James Robinson, but he should be good to go with all signs pointing with him being ready to play, coming off of a torn Achilles, which is still crazy to me, but the X factor just not there yet. We got to see it before we can trust it, and we haven't seen it yet. This kid does have some slight rushing upside at times, but are Christian Kirk and Marvin Jones enough on the outside to really give him that ceiling to raise more fantasy points every single week? We need to wait and find out with that. So Trevor Lawrence going to be a sit for the Washington side of things. It's Carson Wentz, and he was pretty close as well to being a start for me. When it comes to production, though, Wentz is still pretty underrated, in my opinion. Average right around 15.6 fantasy points per game last year in Indianapolis. Now, Washington, they threw the ball right around 32 and a half times per game in 2021, which was 20th most in the NFL. I expect that number as well to increase. Carson Wentz is not really some you know short check down quarterback. He wants to go deeper down the field, and that helps with him having Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. Now, Jacksonville surprisingly wasn't horrendous against opposing quarterbacks last year, allowing 17.5 fantasy points per game, really middle of the pack in the NFL. No major injury concerns here as of right now, but with Terry and Dotson on the outside, that's the X factor. We know that Carson Wentz does not want to check down underneath. He wants to push the ball down the field, kind of a gunslinger mentality. Really no rushing upside here. And there's kind of a lack of a ceiling until we can see how this offense is going to operate. I'm not going to worry about Carson Wentz here in week one. Now we go to Tennessee for the Titans and Giants. And for Daniel Jones, he is not going to be starting for your fantasy football team here this week. The rushing upside definitely helps him, but it's just not consistent enough to ever trust this guy. Kind of like the rest of his play, right? Overly inconsistent every single week. Now, volume-wise, the Giants last year threw the ball 35 times per game. But I could actually see that number come down this year with a new coaching staff and a healthy Saquon Barkley. That's something to pay attention to. Going up against Tennessee, another middle-of-the-pack defense allowing right around 18 fantasy points per game. No major injuries to worry about when it comes to X-Factor. There is nothing as of right now. Dude is inconsistent. Nothing but peaks and valleys, and that's not what we want here in Week 1. For the Titans and Ryan Tannehill, he's going to be a start for me here this week, and here's why. When it comes to production, Ryan Tannehill is severely underrated. He's not a sexy play in fantasy football, but having Derrick Henry in this offense is going to be the key. Last year, Ryan Tannehill averaged just about 17 fantasy points per game, which is not bad. Now, I expect the number of pass attempts to increase this year also, right? They have the additions of Bobby Trees and Traylon Burks and Austin Hooper. 
Last year, they only threw the ball right around 31 times per game, 25th in the NFL. A few more pass attempts per game to some of these big play guys could lead to higher numbers for one Ryan Tannehill. It is a tough matchup for me, though. Going up against the Giants, who are pretty good against opposing quarterbacks in 2021, averaging right around 16 and a half fantasy points per game allowed. Now, no major injuries, and the X factor is this. It's the rushing upside of Ryan Tannehill that he gets no credit for. This guy has had seven rushing touchdowns in back-to-back years in Tennessee. He's mobile, he has outside weapons, and he has Derrick Henry back. I'm actually going to go over to prize picks right now, and I'm going to smash the over of 208.5 passing yards for this game for Ryan Tannehill. I believe Derrick Henry opens up this passing offense, and we see him eclipse that number here this week. But for Ryan Tannehill, 17 out of 25 points, going to be a start. Which will take us over to Arizona, the Kansas City Chiefs, Arizona Cardinals, my Manscaped matchup of the week. Don't forget, as soon as this video is over, head over to Manscaped.com. Get yourself something nice for the bathroom kit, fellas. Not just ball trimmers. They got body wash. They got chapstick. They got deodorant. They got boxer briefs. They got whatever it is you need. Use referral code HEADLINERS at checkout. Get 20% off and free shipping. And this is going to be a fun matchup here between Patrick Mahomes and Kyler Murray, two guys who are going to be obvious starts for me here this week when it comes to Patrick Mahomes in production. The guy had a down year, quote unquote, last year, still averaged over 22 fantasy points per game. He throws the ball over 40 times per week. Arizona's defense last year was pretty solid against quarterbacks, but honestly, I expect that defense to kind of take a step back in that category here this year. It's still a solid unit, but Patrick Mahomes shouldn't have too much issues moving the ball down the field through the air this week. No major injury concerns. And the X factor is this. It's Patrick Mahomes, and he has multiple weapons in the passing game and doesn't have to just force feed Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey. Somebody's going to have a big game here. There's going to be lots of back and forth, lots of passing on the side of the Kansas City Chiefs because what is their run game, right? Who's going to be running the ball? All the running backs they have are pass catching guys. So we know Patrick Mahomes is going to be dropping it all over the field. He's a definite start for Kyler Murray. Same type of thing, right? He's averaged more than Mahomes just last year. I don't think a lot of people realize that. He had an overall pretty solid season. A lot of that came from his rushing upside, though. They only averaged 32.6 pass attempts per game, which was 19th in the NFL. And I don't know if that volume is really going to increase early in the season without DeAndre Hopkins. Now, the matchup with the Chiefs offense, you have to expect them to score, right? And if they're scoring, that means that Arizona is going to have to continue to keep their foot on the pedal and trying to move the ball down the field as quickly quickly as they can to keep putting points on the board. Kansas City last year, they allowed over 20 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, and that number could be dangerously close to that again here this year. Injuries, we're watching Zach Ertz, we're watching Rondell Moore, two guys that Kyler Murray desperately needs. Remember, there's no DeAndre Hopkins, so he needs more than just Hollywood Brown out there to throw the ball to. The X factor, though, has to be his rushing upside each and every week, plus the connection he has with Hollywood Brown. Can they make a couple big plays happen every Every single week for the first six weeks of the season that really boost the overall ceiling of Kyler Murray. I believe they try to establish that early this season in week one, and that's why the X factors right here. Kyler Murray's for sure a start. Over to LA for the Chargers and the Raiders. Another fun game here to watch between Derek Carr and Justin Herbert. Now, both these guys are going to be starts for me this week as well. Derek Carr, though. He's still underrated. I I feel like people still don't give him the credit that he is due. Last year, he averaged just under 16 fantasy points per game, but really had no one to throw the ball to except for Hunter Renfro. Don't forget that Darren Waller, he was banged up last season. It was third in Renfro almost every single game. Now, a healthy Waller, and they've added Devontae Adams in a matchup here going up against the Los Angeles Chargers. You know they're going to have to throw the ball against this powerhouse offense in LA. The Chargers last year allowed right around 18 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, but that defense got way better this offseason with the likes of Khalil Mack and and J.C. Jackson in the secondary. This unit is going to be a little bit scary, but we know they're going to have to throw the ball against them still. No major injury concerns here in Las Vegas, but the X factor, the new coaching staff here, it's Josh McDaniels. How much does he want to open up this offense and push the ball deeper down the field? Are we going to dink and dunk it with you know some of our pass-catching running backs? Are we really going to try to get vertical here? I believe believe they get vertical with Devontae Adams and Darren Waller eats across the middle along with Hunter Renfro. The X Factor is still going to be there for Derek Carr to put up another 4,000 yard season and have plenty of good weeks. Going to be a start here this week for Justin Herbert. 
Obviously, you're starting Justin Herbert here in week one. Otherwise, you don't draft him where you drafted him in fantasy football. The guy last year averaged over 23 fantasy points per game, second highest in the NFL, threw the ball over 35 times per week, going up against a middle-of-the-pack defense in Las Vegas, even though he did add Chandler Jones and Rocky Asin here in the offseason, like those additions to this defense. No major injuries to worry about right now for Justin Herbert, but the X factor for me is Josh Palmer. This dude is a legit wide receiver and would have a much bigger role on a different team if he wasn't buried behind Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. We know those two are going to get theirs, but how does Las Vegas account for Josh Palmer? I don't know if they can, and that can really lead to that boosted upside this week for one Justin Herbert. Now we head up to Minnesota for the Packers and the Vikings, a matchup of Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins. Now, obviously, two guys that you probably want to start here this week once again. Aaron Rodgers, when it comes to production, is sure. He's going to put up top 10 numbers every single year. He has for a long time, but he's done that with Devontae Adams. We have to expect that ceiling that we've seen here as of late to drop down slightly here this year. He just doesn't have the offensive firepower on the outside that he needs to put up huge numbers. Last year, he threw the ball almost 35 times per game. I expect that number to come down this year as well with more emphasis on the running game with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Now, last year, Minnesota was pretty bad against opposing quarterbacks. They allowed the sixth most fantasy points to all opposing quarterbacks last year. In the offseason, they added the likes of Zadarius Smith and Jordan Hicks, drafted Andrew Booth. So I expect that defense to be improved this year as well. No major injury concerns at this time. We are watching big Bob Tunyon to see what his availability could be. That would be another weapon for Aaron Rodgers. The X factor, though, is the pass-catching weapons. Are they enough? Because they are super young in Green Bay to put up big numbers. They're super young, and they're Sammy Watkins. Week one Sammy Watkins. Do we see a week one Sammy Watkins show? I I don't know. I don't know if I want to trust it and throw him in my lineup anywhere, but it's still Aaron Rodgers. He makes everyone around him better from a pass-catching perspective. He's going to remain a start. For Kirk Cousins, still underrated. Averaged just over 19 fantasy points per game in 2021, and now he gets an overall offensive upgrade with the new coaching staff. They already threw the ball quite a bit in Minnesota, averaging right around 36 pass attempts per game. Not the easiest of matchups for him going up against Green Bay. Last year, they allowed 17 fantasy points per game, have a strong secondary in Green Bay. No major injuries to worry about now in Minnesota, but the X factor, can we get Justin Jefferson completely unlocked in a quote-unquote Cooper Cup type role? I think we do, and if we see that, we see huge numbers once again from Kirk Cousins. He's going to be a start for me here in week one. Now we go down to Big D, Dallas Cowboys, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And before I forget, make sure you head over to Prize Picks and smash the over on Tom Brady. It's set at a half a yard. You know he's going to get it. It's a free square. Don't miss out on that opportunity. But when it comes to production, we know Tom Brady's going to put up numbers. Averaged over 23 fantasy points per game just last year. We know he's going to throw the ball a lot. Averaged over 40 pass attempts last year, number one in the NFL. Not a cakewalk going up against the Dallas Cowboys, though. They allowed the 10th fewest fantasy fancy points to opposing quarterbacks just last season. Where I'm worried here, offensive line depth, right? If we have any more injuries to this offensive line, we're going to be in trouble. They're on like their third center right now. That's not good. Chris Godwin's still not 100% back uh, yet either. So something else to pay attention to. But when it comes to X Factor, it's the GOAT. It's national TV. It's in Dallas. It's a big audience. And we can't doubt Tom Brady in a situation like this. He's going to be a start for me here, obviously, this week. For Dak Prescott, same thing, going to be a start as well. Last year, finished ninth among all quarterbacks in fantasy points per game, averaging almost 21 fantasy points per contest. But can he do it with fewer weapons here this year? He's still going to have to throw the ball a lot. It's super hard to run on Tampa Bay, slightly easier to throw on them. And last year, Dallas threw the ball 38 times per game. So you know they're going to have to continue that here this week. The Tampa Bay defense has playmakers on all three levels, though, so this is no easy task, especially with fewer weapons on offense than maybe what Dak Prescott is used to over the last couple of years. He can't spread it out as much because there's not a whole lot of places to spread it. When it comes to injuries, it's the loss of left tackle Tyron Smith that I feel affects Dak Prescott the most as of right now. He was their best offensive lineman. To lose your starting left tackle prior to the season... Not ideal, but the X factor is going to be two people, Tony Pollard and Jalen Tolbert. We're really going to need a couple of these lesser known guys to put up some big numbers to help Dak Prescott. We know Tampa Bay is going to try to take away CeeDee Lamb and Zeke 
for a Jalen Tolbert, for a Tony Pollard? Can one of those guys bust off a big play and really help boost the floor of Dak Prescott? I think they do this week, and that's why Dak is going to be a start. Which takes us to Monday Night Football, the Denver Broncos, Seattle Seahawks, and Russell Wilson's return to Seattle. This one's going to be fun. Russell Wilson for sure going to be a start for me here this week. When it comes to production, I have to believe that Denver is going to let Russ cook down the field. No more boring Seattle offense when at times he's just got to turn around and hand the ball off over and over and over. I expect a more vertical offense in Denver, and I expect it to start here in week one. Last year, Denver struggled with quarterback production, right? They didn't have a whole lot there to really work with, but now with Russell Wilson and the likes of a Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, Albert, are you okay? Plenty of weapons for Russell Wilson to have another huge day. Great matchup as well. Seattle's defense is no longer really feared in the NFL. They allowed over 18 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks just last year, and I kind of believe like that defense got a little bit worse this offseason. They lost Bobby Wagner. That can't be a good thing. When it comes to injuries, not a whole lot, but the X factor is going to be the deep ball. Russell Wilson is one of the best deep ball passers in the NFL, and now he's going to get an opportunity to do that more often to the likes of Jerry Judy and, and Cortland Sutton, and I'm so looking forward to that. I'm looking for him to put on a show in primetime football against his former team. I'm starting Russell Wilson. For Geno Smith, No, like, please don't even tell me you were considering him as a quarterback, too. It's Geno Smith. He hasn't done much ever. This is a super tough matchup for him going up against the Denver Broncos defense. Sure, he's got DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett and Rashad Penny, but I am not overly excited. And no way are we starting Geno Smith here in week one. All right, but there you go. My starts and sits for week one, the quarterback position. Looking forward to setting a bunch of lineups this week and a lot of people walking away with a W here in week one of fantasy football. Don't forget, we have rankings coming out on Thursday. We'll have wide receiver and tight end uh, starts hits coming out tomorrow on Wednesday. We have you covered with everything you need this week when it comes to fantasy football, and we will for the remainder of the year. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we look forward to hanging out with you and absolutely dominating here in 2022. But for now, Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, a great week, and we'll talk to you later.